Let's jump into the code and styling with a mock-up of the final application. But before we begin, I'd like to start by setting up some styles and basic utility methods. I've created a new Uber CN1 project and placed it in the package com.coname1.apps.uberclone. I gave the main class the name uberclone as well. In the main form, I'd like to highlight three different lines. First, we have the default gap between the label text and icon, which is relatively large in the Uber app. So I'll set it to 2 millimeters by default. Next, we lock the phone into portrait mode. This isn't the only thing we need to use for this. Finally, we show the login form, which we'll get to in the next part. We need to install and configure some CN1 lib extensions. We'll install more later, but for the first part, we'll need SMS activation for the UI of the country picker. We also need Google Native Maps for the map UI support. Don't forget to set up Google Maps in the project as mentioned in the Maps module. As I mentioned before, locking the orientation and code isn't enough for iOS. In iOS, we need to define orientation lock in the project level, which we can do in the coding one settings iOS section. Some styles are essential to begin with, so we need to add the following styles into the theme. Notice that a lot of these styles are a result of trial and error to get the UI to look like the designs. The process of choosing the values boils down to trying, grabbing device screenshots, adjusting, rinse, repeat. It sounds like a lot of work, but it's not too hard as you quickly get the sense of what needs fixing. I define form as white, which is really the main thing here. On Android, by default, they are a bit off-white. I define label as heavily padded with a light font black on white. This is consistent with the common use of labels within the app. So I'll set foreground to black and background to white. I've set padding to a generous 4 millimeters as padding is very heavy in the Uber app. The margin is set to zero for almost all of the components here. I use standard native light fonts for almost everything as they look great everywhere. In this case, I chose a 3.2 millimeter font, which seems to closely match the dimensions of Uber font choices. One important thing to mention is that I used derive all on pretty much every style in the theme. This works by right clicking a style and selecting derive all. Once you do that, it creates styles for selected, pressed, disabled that derive from this style. That's a very useful starting point. It's important even for labels, as they can be used in lead components and we'd like them to have a common base setting. I defined toolbar as transparent without the border that exists on some platforms. Notice that this doesn't handle the inconsistent title issue where some forms have a black title area where others have a transparent white title area. I will discuss those later. I've set the background to opaque white just to be sure. I've also disabled the border of the base toolbar by explicitly defining it as empty. I defined title command as black on white. This is a bit problematic with the black toolbar, which requires a bit of a hack and code to work. The padding numbers are there to make the collapsible toolbar possible. This collapse effect featured in several forms, such as the countries form. Margin is zero as usual. 
and the font is relatively large, four millimeters. This is mostly used to size the back arrow icon and the search icon. The side navigation panel is mostly black on white and relatively clean. So I just defined the background as opaque white and ignored the black since that's part of the command. We have an underline at the bottom to separate the panel from the south component below. So we need to reserve two pixels for it in the margin. The padding is zero as usual, as spacing will come from the commands, not from the panel. The underline separator from the south component is just an underlying gray border with a thickness of two pixels. Side command pretty much continues what we started in side navigation panel. Here we set the foreground to black on transparent color. This will be useful with the black toolbar where we will only change the color to leave to white but leave the transparency in place. The padding of the side command prevents duplicate padding when commands are one on top of the other which is why the bottom padding is so small. Margin is zero as usual. And the font is again a standard size light font. The text field in the Uber app is based on the material design simple underlined text field, even when running on iOS. So we need the text field to have an underlined border and work with black on white. We define the UI as transparent with a black foreground. The padding below is relatively low uh, too, so the line won't be too far from the text input. The left and right paddings are zero, so the text start uh, will align with the line start. The margin serves the role we usually use for padding here. It spaces out the component. The underlying border is pretty simple, a black two pixel border. However, in the selected version of the text field, we have a four pixel version of the same border to indicate selection. Font is a standard three millimeter light font. The text hint needs to align with the text field so it's important to override it when we manipulate the text field. We use the same padding as text field. I could have derived text field which might have been better a better approach but I didn't want to get into that. The margin is again identical to the one in the text field. The font size is smaller and regular instead of common light font. That looked closer to the choices Uber made. Finally, the floating action button, which is just white on black, nothing else. With this, we can move forward to creating the mock-up, although there are some additional styles we'll define during the creation itself.